Good evening, Maria, back with another video. It is 6.54 p.m. It is June 21st. Looks like it's the first day of summer, and I thought I'd come on and make a video. Say hi to all the other targeted individuals, <laughs> and um, just kind of getting some things off my chest, you know. Um, you know, as many of my viewers know that I am somebody who thinks a lot. Like, I think I spend just hours a day just thinking and letting thoughts flow through my mind and unfortunately um although it's like not something I, I really don't control it I mean there's some thoughts that come in my mind and then I just engage it like because it's so interesting to me certain topics are um things I want to mull over in my mind for long periods of time and do some more research and all this other stuff. But then there's a lot of things that come up in my mind that I find extremely disturbing. And as you know, and the reason why I have this channel that's established is because I've been a targeted individual. I have been a victim of human trafficking for years, um, decades. And um, it does take a while to come to the realization after experiencing too many coincidences, too many job terminations, too many um, strange, too, witnessing so much strange behavior around you that you come to the realization. And then of course I did, I found out people who were behind it and everything. And it was extremely, extremely traumatizing to me um, for many reasons. Um, I think, I think a lot of it has to do with people revealing their true colors and then you losing your sense of security because you think one thing about a certain environment, certain place or whatever. And yeah, people think, well, Murray, aren't you psychic? I will tell you, I, I've always been the kind of person that can read into a person, but for the most part, I do my best not to. Because if I was to initially just read into people at our first meeting all the time, I probably wouldn't like a lot of people and then that relationship would shut down because this is how I am when I don't like you don't trust you and don't want to feel close to you I will do everything I can to not be in your presence you know what I mean um, if you're just like an extremely unpleasant person so I you always take things at face value and I never looked at and, and, and looked at people closer you know what I mean I mean I knew there were certain people that I if I had the choice to not spend time with them, I certainly would do everything I could to spend less time with them. But I was what re revealed to me were the people who got involved in my targeting were putting up like a front for like years and years and years and years and years. And it literally disturbed me. Now, I want to make it very clear that the mental disturbance that I experienced was not because I felt heartbroken because I was mourning those people because I didn't really feel that close to them anyway. But, but it did bother me that somebody wanted to hurt me that bad. It disturbed me that somebody wanted to make choices that was basically reducing my quality of life and they didn't care. They were basically putting their needs over mine at any cost. And, um, and it was terrifying to me. And it was like, what are you doing? You're, you're destroying my career. You're trying to tell me who I can marry, who I can't marry. Um, you're monitoring the friendships that I have. You're, you know, just this sort of thing. And it was scary. And what bothered me more than anything, and I'm so sorry, I don't mean to rage at the people who were involved in this, but it's very difficult for me not to. Because, um, you know, you never know um, what really is fueling a, an argument, you know, and you never really know, um, you know, how can I say this? People don't know what is really fueling the argument, but they're more than willing to participate in the, the emotional financial abuse of a human being. It is extremely barbaric. Um, and I'm planning on doing a video about, you know, more issues relating to human behavior and their animalistic behavior, uh, nature, um, because it is very fascinating. But I had noticed in this, this issue of my targeting that um, I realized that the moral standards in the majority of people were extremely low and how women 
such as myself um, could be in very vulnerable positions, uh, mainly because the lack of morals of certain people, even law, people, members of law enforcement. And some people don't recognize what is illegal and what is not. And it was very terrifying to me. Um, I, I want to make it very clear that, and, and, and I'm hoping that I could speak up for people who don't have a voice. There are a lot of people who are targeted individuals who are living marginal lives, um, not because they want to, it's because they're being forced to. There are some people, um, such as the people who got involved in my targeting, who are basically handing down things to individuals, basically, like maybe like giving them a home, but making sure they can't leave. Uh, giving them um, a job, but making sure they can't, uh, they can't leave, or they can't progress in that job, or they can't um, have certain friends. And some people on the outside might think, well, that person's a little controlling, that person's a little bossy, that person's a little, you know, I wouldn't, that person's got an attitude problem who's, you know, basically trying to control another human being. But the story is deeper than that. There are a lot of times some families are extremely toxic. And I understand some families operate in a way where they have, they have a commitment to each other. But most of it, most of the time here in the United States, it, it, the, I would say most Americans, people, and I'm not talking about black, white, whatever. I'm just saying is most family participation is consensual okay like when i was growing up my family told me my mother and my father especially my mother when by the time you're 18 years old you leave the house you do what you want to do and that's all the fuck i wanted to do and i will tell you growing up in my family um you know i i knew that i was different and i knew that um you know I knew that my my siblings did things sometimes that were very insensitive to me. Um, but when I got into the targeting, my eyes started to open up to certain things that made me realize how toxic and how unhappy I was living among my relatives, my blood relatives. And, and, I, and I remember there were times where I didn't really want to be around them because of their cruelty that they they exhibited towards me and I was the family scapegoat and I, I started coming to that realization more and more in my targeting um, because as I started thinking about all the memories um, I, I really can't remember a time where I wasn't being demeaned abused you know uh, mistreated had some sort of sarcastic remark thrown in my face whatever blah 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 you know all the way down the line and so, you know, when you're younger, you kind of rationalize it as, well, you know, um, kids are kids. Because when I, but when I was in my late, late 20s and 30s, when I would look back at my childhood years, I would think, you know, that's typical kids. Kids are, you know, they, they do that. You know, they put tacks in your chair. They do silly stuff. They're constantly playing pranks. And they do a lot of insensitive things. But what I didn't realize is that these bullies that I was growing up with were, you it, they grew into something worse, basically, and something that um, I couldn't deal with. Um, somebody who tries to control your relationships, somebody who basically is trying to prevent you from um, uh, having friends or, uh, you know, see, I have no interest in getting married, okay, but I'll be damned if somebody's going to tell me I can't get married. Um, I, I, I have no interest in going to certain places, but I'd be damned if somebody's going to blacklist me in all 50 states when I have the right to be free anywhere I fucking goddamn please. And when I realized the severity of this sort of bullying behavior, this is the kind of behavior that parents need to nip in the bud immediately because this is what it can evolve into. It can evolve into somebody who traffics another human being. Okay, and so, some people, if you don't understand the severity of this, I, I, I don't know how else I could explain it other than I have been a victim of human trafficking for over two decades. And like most people who have experienced um, being victims of human trafficking, I feel as though I'm, I can go back in my mind and feel like I'm trying to account for lost time.
seriously because like i i and this is what a lot of people say some people think well what do you mean when when people say that did you did you have like amnesia during that time no i think what they're trying to say is that years went by in a very similar state of being that was beyond your control like you know to where it, it's like um there were hardly any marks or periods of, of time where th things were different it was always dealing with people who were irrational people who were bullying people who were uh, and it always seemed like a controlled environment you know what i mean with people who were basically their um people their friends their connections that were basically being the mouthpiece for them they couldn't cuss me out so they would have somebody else do it and people are wicked and, and evil and they don't have um you know any moral standards and they don't really care what the cause is they will they will fucking do it and they will comply um so yeah some family members um uh do it because they are trying to force people into marriage which i believe this is what my family was trying to do to me um and i do believe that my family has certain standards of living and beliefs that i am absolutely like i don't support them in any way i'm completely against them and i'm not going to go into it but i've already addressed it in a few of my other videos and i don't agree with it and what would start off as somebody not really because i there were times you know you go to your family functions or your maybe a, a relative is throwing dinner or something and you go to that dinner and i'll go and i deep down inside i can't wait to get the fuck out of that house you know and this is why and the reason why is because I am different than they are. I don't, you know, I, I'm, you know, a happy, bubbly, go, a happy, bubbly uh, person. And they always resented that, you know. Um, and there's been, it got to the point where there was, it, it got out of control. Okay. I am not comfortable with dealing with things in my past. And some people uh who are targeted and just like you know you you it's it's difficult to relate the need to a person um how need how important it is to go no contact um in um to other people who've never dealt with maybe like family abuse at least to this extent like um i think if somebody tries to control someone's life to that extent you know to where you don't have a choice of your job um somebody's trying to tell you how you're supposed to dress somebody's trying to tell you who you can't they don't want you to be with anybody but them this is a very serious issue and sometimes it, it's a it, it's an indicator of some sort of sexual abuse even within families and this needs to be paid attention to um by by people who are who are looking and, and, and who are watching or even participating in this they need to think about why would somebody be so obsessive about another person you know who basically apparently is not even doing anything i mean i literally don't have much of an existence you know what i mean i'm sure that had i not been born into that family i would have had a better life i think about that on a daily basis like i think about how much better off my life would have been overall had i not been born in that family but again you know you can you know sit there and you could go through all these different life scenarios what it would have been like if this didn't happen and this stuff but it is what it is okay but um you know i don't want to have a relationship with them i feel ill to my stomach when i think about it i feel disturbed um that somebody would take something that far um and you know um and i and like i said i wanted to also kind of go back on and talk about um how you know some people are extremely competitive to the point of where um and i've never been competitive but they're competitive to the point of where they sorry my 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 uh I accidentally touched a button on my computer and it just like shut down <laughs> but in in my case um kind of forgot I was talking about as I was trying to fuddle with my computer but anyway um you know in my case I've had to deal with um you know year in and year out of you know having problems with people in the workplace 
um, feeling uncomfortable, feeling pressured in the workplace unnecessarily over matters that, that are extremely trivial and, and this sort of thing. And I think some people thought because there wasn't a religion, there was a religious aspect to this. They may have thought, well, you know, you know, she, maybe she should, maybe she should give her life to God, especially since uh, people had these ridiculous rumor um, ideas about me based on my spiritual beliefs. I think they were kind of exaggerated. But no, I mean, people do have religious um, freedoms. They have the right to worship whatever. And I do think that in this case, uh, and I've, I've um, I, you know, I've mentioned it before, that that um, religion was used as an excuse to to abuse a person, which this is something a lot of people resort to, especially to get a large following, okay? Um, but what I'm, I'm saying is, is that um, I wish that more people would question um, whether something is right and whether it's wrong. I wish people knew and understood that I was over the 18 years of 18, they were the age of 18 and I had the right to have my own life and would have put an end to this years ago. I would have never let it happen to begin with is what I would have liked to have had have happened. Um, I, I think about how many years I suffered, um, how many weekends I was always scared about losing my job because people were ruining my life. You know, um, that can take a toll on a person. You know, and what made me even more ill is the fact that these people wanted to make these life decisions for me. Um, that was my whole life. Like, you you know, I think about the greed. I, I do believe that this sort of behavior, you know, I, I, I talk about spirituality, but I do believe it is a demonic uh, nature to to want to control someone to that extent. You know, and um, it, it scares me half to death, you know, at how, like I said, how vulnerable many women are, especially trying to survive and making decisions for themselves. And I know some people will say, hey, if you're worried about being vulnerable, you can always get married and get yourself a man. I'm not going down that road, okay? I've already talked about that's the worst thing you can do if you're in a situation like me because I don't have any family okay I have my son okay um my son okay and I see him every once in a while you know he comes and visits every once in a while not for very long but he's you know because it's hi mom or whatever and he heads out the door okay um uh, but I don't have what you call like any support okay so um that means if something happens to me I'm fucked you know what I mean I don't have anybody to go to and I will not go to my family and I, I refuse to go to my family um, that's abuse. And the only, and it, they've already indicated that they would abuse me. I don't want anything to do with these people. So, uh, uh, and I realized I was on my own the last time I went down to the Antelope Valley and it became clear to me and, and obvious to me that they were part of my targeting. targeting. And so I, I realized that. So if I was to get myself in a situation, marriage, um, a, a man could easily abuse me. I could be right back in the same situation um, that I was in before, okay? And that's not what I want, you know. Um, I just have I I have to be careful in my life, and I and I and I understand that, you know. And I've dealt with a lot of trauma. It's it's con a constant trauma when you have to worry about your associates and you're wondering, oh, is this person, does this person know, you know, this person, is this person trying to get close to me? Because I, I will tell you, I don't want to to have anything to do with my ex-husband. I don't want anything to do with my ex my son's father. I don't want anything to do with my blood relations. I, I don't want anything. I didn't even go to my mother's funeral. I was, I have been literally emotionally annihilated by everything that happened you know and I understand there's a lot of old-fashioned people out there who you know they 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 think marriage is a good idea and it's 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 traditional and I'm not bashing it okay but there are some people who who don't get married for good reason 
Now, there, there's other reasons, okay? Personally, like I said, you know, I'm really not into the whole sexual thing. And I know some people are going to say, that's not true, Maria. You wear lipstick. You, you are a girl. You're, you're feminine. You wear girly clothes. You love that kind of, That's a totally different thing. Yes, you can have an interest in clothes, uh, fashion, accessories, whatever it is. You can like those things. And it has nothing to do with your sexuality. It just doesn't, Okay. And some people will say, well, and I understand what marriage is. Marriage is, to me, nothing more than a business arrangement. I don't want to do that. Okay. Even more so, like, what if a man realized you know, that they're going to work you to your potential? They might fucking, like, treat you even harder because they think, oh, she can make money. I'll fucking work this bitch to death. You know, I don't trust people. You know what I mean? So you have to be very careful. And, um, you know, I'm angry because you have so many immature people who who um what do you call it uh didn't mind exposing me my privacy my 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 personal life um out in the open um when it came to this employment issue i mean that's like it's, it's mind-boggling to me but i i've come to the realization that the world isn't just corrupt it is a, a platform of hell literally it is you know, I have lost my faith in people. I mean, I have, I mean, like I said, I've always knew people were evil, but I will tell you, I'm surprised at the kind of evil that runs rampant on this earth. And, you know, um, you know, and then I also think, you know, how the morals, the lack of morals, all of it, the, the religious part of it, the fucking, it's, it's a nightmare to me because ever since I, I can remember all I've really cherished in my life was my distance, my freedom, you know, um, knowing when I was growing up in that family that I, I really do consider my, my family, um, ignorant, like they're, they're, they don't know what's right and they don't know what's wrong. They don't. Okay. Even though I, my father seemed to be really good at knowing certain things and, in and, and more worldly some people are going to listen and some people aren't. And so I, I have often wondered, how is it that you can have three children under the same, I'm uh, sorry, four children, four children under the same roof, um, exposed by the same environment, and each one turns out different, or one turns out different, or whatever. I have wondered that myself, you know. Um, I do think there is a spiritual reason for it. Biologically, I can't explain that. You know what I mean? But anyway, it is what it is. But um, I... I, I was unhappy growing up in, in that, that, that family. And, um, and I'm angry that, uh, that they would come back and not only come back, but try to monopolize my life in the manner they did. And for years, and then they were not afraid or, or they didn't see anything wrong with it. Like they could not stop wanting to take and take away from my life. You know, like telling me who I'm supposed to be with, blah, 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 blah. You know, just all of it. I'm disturbed. And there are families who are like this. And people need to start being aware of signs of abuse and do something about it. You know, um, and don't allow this sort of trafficking to continue. I mean, recognize the signs already, you know. And it's hard because, you know, I brought up the comparison of how people get trained on sexual harassment multiple times. But at the same time, this, this case right here is sexual harassment. A lot of it has to do with it. Um, telling a woman what she's supposed to wear, monitoring her the way that they were. Um, it, it, that is sexual harassment. And then trying to like tease people like, oh, you know, you're, you're trying to do this because of this. And, you know, that whole whatever. Um, it is, you know, yeah. I can't tell you the stuff that I went through, you know, and I want, wanted you to question, I question why would, does it even seem normal to anybody that I would be sexually harassed by people who are my blood relatives? Okay, so something is not quite right there. I have a very strange group of people that I, you know, unfortunately was raised around and I'm disturbed by it. I'm disturbed by these people. You know what I mean? I'm not comfortable with them. I'm not comfortable with the reality of what happened to me. I'm not comfortable with somebody who thought it was okay to do those sort of things. You know, or thinking that 
I had to or that I was supposed to or any I don't want people expecting those sort of things of me you know and when I think about my life you know looking back on what I could have had I could have had more to my life had I not been born in that family so now this this video is called looking forward I don't know what what life holds for me you know every day I try to to make myself a little happy you know try to make things a little better for myself cheer myself up a little bit I know they probably get pissed off because they, you know they're nosy and they're like oh she's wearing a nice outfit to work yes I fucking gonna wear that nice outfit to work we don't know if we're gonna get hit by a car next the next day so I figure fuck it I'm gonna wear that blue dress that you know I had in my closet and I haven't worn it before I'm trying to get the best out of my life you know at this point even if it's something small you know and there's, yeah, I mean, I do have great plans I want it to carry through. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to. And I hope that I will. You know what I mean? Um, you know, every day is another step. You know, every day is exactly that, another day. You know, um, maybe I would have met the right people instead of, you know, when I was younger. And instead of, like, being stuck in their bubble, in their box, among their social network of people. You know, it deprived me of my, my, um, my happiness. It deprived me of my freedom. You know what I mean? And believe me, don't ever touch my freedom. Don't ever, don't touch my freedom because that's all I have and that's all I care about. You know, and, um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not happy with the situation that happened. And it kind of floated through my mind yesterday or yeah, a few days, for the last few days. I'm not interested in um, bridging the gap. I'm not interested in being friends I, 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 with people that did this to me I, or, or communicating with them, um, wanting to, you know, I, I don't want it. It's like, and, and what a lot of people don't understand, like a lot of narcissistic people don't understand, and not just even narcissistic people, some people don't understand that, um, that, it is a great need in people to sever ties after something like this happens because the way I'm looking at these people is that, that there's a sort of perversion that, that exists inside of them that to me is not appropriate and I don't want it. Just like some people get freaked out when they see child molesters. That to me is the same thing. Just like if somebody, you know, or a murderer or a rapist or something along those lines, that's what it does to me that's the effect it has on me that's the view that I have of it and I'm disturbed by it you know what I mean and I know that that some people in this community are okay with things like incest or whatever maybe they were raised that way okay but at the end of the day if somebody is not consent it's not consensual if I you're not comfortable with it person has the right to say I'm not comfortable with that stuff I don't believe in that sort of stuff I don't accept it anything other than that if somebody's still persistent that's a little rapey to me, okay? That's a little sick and twisted. So I'm not comfortable with it, you know? Um, so anyway, I guess I just wanted to get that off my chest. Because um, like I said, you know, the trauma, it unwinds after a, a certain amount of time. And I know I've been traumatized multiple, multiple times. And, um, you know, in, in, in my situation, it's kind of like, an interesting thing to monitor and look at um, because I'm I don't have a lot of faith in like therapy I don't I think a lot of it's a waste of time people got to make you know a dollar somehow so they might as well take advantage of somebody else but I don't see where therapy helps most people I really don't um, but you know I did see the need at one time to talk to somebody about it I know that the um, medical industry industry is really good on uh, good I shouldn't say good but known for prescribing you know psychiatric medicines of various kinds to people who go through something that's traumatizing and that's great you can numb the pain but at the end of the day how do you deal with narcissistic narcissistic abuse how do you deal with human trafficking how do I don't need somebody numbing my mind I need real answers and the real answers are identifying the problem i think people are becoming more and more even though it's hard for some people to fathom i do see that a lot of books and articles online 
are also coming to the realization of how to cope best with narcissistic abuse. And many people are also recommending that people don't, they don't have to forgive. Okay, I think that the, the worst thing to do to a person who's been traumatized and the, the lies that they come up with, this whole thing about, well, you should forgive that person. Okay, and then that puts you right back in that situation where you're in their clutches and you're going to get yourself abused. Okay, now a lot of people are saying, you know, you need to cut ties. There are even some people are saying, hey, even if you're a minor, if you have to get out of that family, you could become emancipated, whatever you need to do, you do what you need to do to get out of there. You know what I mean? And so, um, in my mind, um, it makes sense to me. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to another person, especially if a family, you know, is pretty large and they have like a really warm family. They can't imagine what it would be like to split ties with their family. But if you have an abusive family and if, if you don't know what went on in this community, I will tell you it was abuse. It's abuse to do that to another human being. And a lot of, a lot of siblings do it to each other. A lot of family members, a lot of mothers do it to their kids. Um, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and a lot of spouses do it. Like I know my ex-husband was trying to manipulate my employment. I, I, it's crazy. Okay. But you have to understand that these are signs of abuse and you have to question that, you know, and to not, to, to ignore it. It's like, well, you know, uh, I'm still angry with like the places like the department of human trafficking. I get angry because, um, you know, people forget their professional responsibilities. I question whether they had the proper training to recognize this because these sort of scenarios and these lies that get told to employers, neighbors, even police officers or whatever, these sort of manipulative tactics they tell to outside people are exactly the same thing that they tell people and the same type of scenarios and setups so that they can get away with trafficking another human being. Okay, you got to ask yourself, why would somebody want control over a person who's over the age of 18? If this is a religious issue, they need to go and take that over to, you know, maybe a clergyman in their, in their church or whatever. Like if, since they were bringing out religion, if that's true, then a logical person would say, okay, if this is a, re a matter of religion, get together with maybe your elder, your priest, your pastor, whatever, spend some time after church, you know, in that little room on the side and talk about this issue. You handle it there. You don't get a community. See, this is why um, I get upset with people, okay? Because people will endanger your life and think nothing of it. Even so-called trained professionals. I, I, I also question what do victims of human trafficking, what resources do they actually have? What re resources can they really trust and what, who can they really rely on to help them? Because, um, I don't think most people recognize those signs, even these particular agencies that are supposed to help these individuals. Cause like I said, you know, when people think of human trafficking, the saddest thing is, is that they always have that one scenario in mind. And it's not to say that it doesn't look that way because human trafficking has many faces. Yes. Some people do get, bound and, and, and gagged and thrown to in the back of a trunk, whether, you know, uh, that does happen. But most hum cases of human trafficking are played out, like I said, right in front of your face, in your neighborhood, next door, whatever. Somebody is basically enslaving another human being in 2022. Okay. And this is what I'm hopefully speaking out about and I want I don't know I keep asking myself every night did I help somebody did maybe somebody hurt one of my videos and maybe they let somebody go maybe somebody was being bullied relentlessly for years and maybe some stupid per people because tell people are fucking stupid okay they'll do this sort of shit to a person tell the person will fucking drop down dead okay because I can't tell you the stress level that you go through when you're going through something like this okay and maybe I was hoping that maybe there was somebody who was abusing somebody and they didn't realize what they were doing and they just 
left this person alone. If I could help one person through this, that would make me happy. It wouldn't make it worth what I had to go through. Nothing would, okay? Because I'm going to tell you what, nothing is, I, I, I have a lot of mental issues because of this, okay? But I can't trust the, anybody at all. Because I will tell you there were certain agencies who were more than willing to assist these people. Okay. And you can't, when you see something that terrifying, that jaw-dropping, you know, um, and you, you realize, my gosh, you know, you better start explaining this in a way where people are going to understand I tried, and I made all kinds of videos. I made videos about the referencing laws. Since they were using the Bible as an excuse, I used the Bible. I did everything I could. I stayed at my case for over five years and over 1,200 videos. Okay, I will tell you, every day I was scared because I left the farmer's place back in 2013 in my early 40s, and I knew I needed to get myself fucking together and find some sort of stability so I can put away for retirement because God only knows I'm just a regular worker like everybody else. And those years were crucial. I mean, that was so important. Because think about it. Most people retire when they're 60, around 60-ish or something. And I'm sitting here like 40-something. I had already lost a few jobs before that because of these fucking idiots. And so I needed to get myself back stable, standing on my feet. But they were playing games. My life was a fucking joke to these fucking people. These evil fucking people. So, and I'm not just talking about my blood relations. I'm talking about the other people. I'm talking about my ex-husband or whatever and his family. Whatever. Okay, all these people who have had this sick, twisted sense of entitlement that they should not have had. That was completely illegal and that other people helped them get away with. Okay. I, it, it's, it's traumatizing, extremely traumatizing. So anyway, um, I do hope that I have helped someone and, um, I'm not, a, I'm not into like, um, I've never been one into political causes. I'm not a political person. I don't believe our vote means shit. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, get involved with any of those sort of things, but I do believe that, um, we live in a world where people, are immoral very immoral and that i don't think you know when i hear a child somebody when somebody says the word child molester to me to me i flinch i i get like oh like oh my gosh how sad how disturbing how twisted how warped whatever that does not freak that many people out okay i have i will tell you in my situation what i had to live through and what i've seen the wicked shit that i've seen from people the very fact that it took me this long to get any sort of help at all tells you that the majority of people are fucking evil. Or if they turn a blind eye to it or they don't see anything wrong with it, they're either immoral themselves, incestuous themselves, or something along those lines. You know what I mean? And it's fine. You can, pra you can practice that sort of stuff. If you're over the age of 18, you have the right to do whatever you want. Okay, But it's not consensual when somebody doesn't want to have any part of that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video and I will be back with another video sometime later. Take care.